Hi, I'm Noah. I'm the developer of Zombieville and uh, Battleheart. And I'm um, just wrapping up Zombieville USA 3D. It's coming to Steam very soon. And uh, I've had a lot of people comment that they really like the art style. And I thought I would share a little glimpse of how I've been making some of this stuff. Uh, because uh, to some people's surprise, it's, it's made in Unreal Engine. And they don't associate Unreal with stylized games. They think Unreal can't do cartoony stuff. And uh, the truth is, a lot of it is in the, the, the texture painting. And, uh, and then a little bit in the shaders and post-processing, which I can show a little bit of later, but I figured it'd be cool to show how I approach the texturing for one of the characters. And, uh, I, you know, this is by no means a tutorial. This is just how I personally approach painting. And uh, I think it, it produces a cool result. And uh, I think is, is good proof that you in fact can do a variety of styles in whatever engine you choose you're really not stuck with one thing or another uh, even if so, say something like unreal has its strengths uh, when it comes to realistic graphics it can it can do a wide range of things um, but uh, anyway I'm just gonna let this uh, footage I, I recorded myself painting this this is about about two hours uh, of, of texture painting that I condensed down to just a few minutes here and uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit over it as it goes but for the most part my approach to these things is pretty simple I, I, uh, I start with two colors I start with a base color and like kind of a mid-tone and once I have sort of sculpted in the shapes uh, then I'll start adding uh, highlights and slightly darker areas like what I'm doing right now just punching in various crevices and shadows and stuff but the goal is always to essentially make it look pretty good with no lighting whatsoever so that it, it looks like it has form um, in a kind of a hand painted sort of way with with no lighting and then once it's in the game engine the lighting is just kind of a bonus on top uh, and and that's um, a bit of a new style for me. Usually I don't work with lighting at all. I, I used to do mobile games, as many people know, and um, just for performance reasons, I kept dynamic lighting out of the picture. So I got very used to trying to make things look as good as they can without lighting. And uh, these days, now it's uh, not so much of a restriction, so I'm having a field day. <laughs> So this character, he's a uh, he's an explosive zombie. He gets close to you and tries to blow up. So he's got kind of a goofy shape, and once he's in engine, he's got a bunch of green fumes coming off of him, which is kind of fun. Like all zombies, doesn't really take care of his skin, doesn't moisturize. He's full of all kinds of complexion problems. Here I'm actually painting in a shadow. Uh, under the hat, keeping it nice and soft so it doesn't compete with any real shadows if there are any, but it's just almost like I'm painting in ambient occlusion. And that's actually kind of the, the thing I have in the back of my head whenever I'm doing these is I, I want the whatever I paint in lighting wise to be kind of vague and non-directional as much as possible so that it just feels like a layer on top of any lighting that gets applied later. Adding in some highlights to the arms here. This might be the part where you're thinking, wow, this looks really tedious. <laughs> this takes, this must take forever, right? And uh, I keep the level of detail pretty low. Everything's real kind of rough and sketchy. And like I said at the beginning, I think uh, this is about two hours of work for this character. Typically, I don't have to do a whole lot of versions. Uh, the zombies do have a lot of death animations. I do have to make variants where they've either been decapitated or sliced in half, set on fire, that kind of thing. But most of the time they are based on this. At least 80% is shared, so I don't have to do a whole lot of rework. Not entirely sure why this guy is uh, seemingly a sailor or something. <laughs> This is an old design from Zombieville 2 where he, he had like a little anchor on his 
on his uh, deltoid there. Decided to keep it. I think this is the part where I was starting to think this, this shirt, it looks a little too clean. It looks like he's not freshly like exhumed. So uh, I started to rough it up a little bit with some some discoloration. And then of course it wasn't nasty enough, so we gave him some, <laughs> some very funky stains and other stuff. He, he's a sweaty zombie, uh, evidently. Add some little Maybe it's blood, maybe it's dirt. I love his tiny hat. seeing a pattern here where a lot of what I'm doing is I lay down a, a color and then erase away as opposed to painting in where I want things it's like I paint where I don't want it I find that's uh it's easier to kind of get into the nooks and crannies in in good ways when I'm working that way it's kind of working in reverse and here this is very much Kind of like painting the undersides of drawers where there's almost no situation where you're ever going to even see the side of his pant leg but yeah there's there's a little little indication of a pocket there or a seam just in case and uh there he is that's uh that's the base color map again this is no lighting whatsoever uh but it feels pretty voluminous here and, uh, and then once I get it into the engine he's got a, a bit of a self-illuminated shader and some particles and some post-processing for an outline. So as far as the shader is concerned all, all the characters use the same basic shader and uh, it, it's it's essentially a lit shader that's slightly glowing. It's a really simple trick. Uh, basically I got to this because I initially brought in the textures and this, this is like a standard lit shader where you know you have the, the texture just going into base color i'm setting the roughness to one so that it's completely matte there's no shininess to it at all so i get just what i painted in but the result is that you know the the, the self lighting the self shadowing and everything all that shading is uh you know it's making it look more like a regular model or something, but it's, it's kind of fighting with the style of, of just the model and the texturing. So previously, like I was talking about before, I, I would do unlit, unlit shaders like this, where, you know, it looks bright and colorful and, and what I see is just exactly what I painted on the surface, but it doesn't respond to lighting at all. So, you know, if I, if I move it into this spotlight or next to this burning trash can or something, it's just, it's not picking up on it. It gets the cast shadows, but nothing else. Whereas with this lit shader, you know, you get nice hot spots from from the uh, the light from above, or you get nice warm glows from fires like this. And, and I really wanted to see things like muzzle flashes and explosions be represented on the player um, and, and the zombies as well. So, so what I landed on is this, which uh, does get the best of both worlds. It's nice and bright and colorful. It looks self-lit, but it still picks up color from lights. And all I'm doing to do this is uh, I'm taking a lit material and taking about 30% of the color and putting that into the emissive. So, so they're basically just normal lit materials that are also glowing with their own colors a smidge. And you know, it ends up getting a nice result. And then on top of that, we have an outline post-process, which gets a nice thin little kind of tune shaded outline. And that is best explained by somebody who knows what they're talking about, because I, I followed along with a really great 
video, which I will link in the description from Evans Bull, I believe. And uh, it's uh, it's a big subject. It's a long video, so tuck in. But it's, he's very thorough, and, and that's what I use to uh, come up with with uh, what I ended up using for my, my post processing. And uh, besides that, the only key ingredient is the, the base lighting. And for that, there's literally just two lights. It's it's a skylight, which is just kind of a very ambient blue fill using an HDR image. And then I have a directional light that acts as my main uh, shadow caster, which by itself looks like this. It's pretty simple. So that's how I get to the final look. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, look behind the scenes and uh, maybe it inspires you to try painting some stylized characters of your own. But uh, I've been really enjoying it. I'm really happy with the results I've been getting here and uh, uh, I will probably be doing more stylized stuff in Unreal in the future. So keep an eye peeled.